Welcome back to Game Does Play Games, where we play games while talking about game design. Yeah, man. Playing what we do. Vagrant Story. And there will be no librarians today, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a earthquake that just happened. It was a little rumble. I would say probably them. like a four on the Richter scale. <laughs> I don't actually remember if that's a lot or not. Anyway, it's, it's not I, th- I think it's three that you can't feel it, so maybe four is about right. Strange power, indeed. He quotes. Hey, I get to move around and shit. Look at this, look at this. I can jump on things and stuff, and then, you know, like, oop. <laughs> I'll just long step over this giant crate, thank you. <laughs> You're telling me off camera about how uh, you you once upon a time played this with Game Shark, and one of the, the cheats was that you could, like, when you jump, you just, like, skyrocket. You, like, teleport up, <laughs> and then if you're moving while doing it, you'd be like woo-doo, 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 woo-doo. And, and now you're gonna have to put this, you better make a note, you're gonna have to, to Chris put little bouncy Ashley Riots on the screen Ashley Riots <laughs> So, uh, yeah Game Shark was a lot of fun, did weird shit man You know, we, we actually had a guy, uh, one of our friends that runs sort of his own show, um that wanted to jump onto GDPG and do a bunch of like Game Shark related stuff, and it's like, well, for a game design show, it sort of doesn't make sense, but at the same time, like, cheating in games is a very interesting game design conversation in and of itself. That's true. Um, so I, you know, maybe someday we'll we'll have something like that. I know we once upon a time promised around. we'd do a Steam controller episode, and then I broke the Steam controller. You did. Yeah, oh. I didn't tell you about that. I don't remember that. No. Yeah, I broke it. What the hell's wrong with you? That's, mine's still perfectly fine and intact. Oh, well, then if we do a Steam controller, we could so do we'll use yours. So don't pay attention <laughs> to the fact that an hour and a half has passed. We were screwing a lot, <laughs> screwing around a lot in between. <laughs> well, that was so well, that came out wrong. <laughs> uh, in between episodes. So uh, cool. Uh, <laughs> that is a save point, and I did just save. This game, by the way, takes up three slots on a memory card. Uh, and to be fair. You know, when you first told me that, I was like, wow, that's a lot. And now that I actually see the game, I'm like, well, there's a lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. A lot of numbers going on. So, uh, cool. Uh, I just opened a chest, and there are a lot of things. Do you have, like, an inventory capacity? Uh, you do. <laughs> oh, my God. Because this game's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got some items that heal and heal uh, risk, which is important. And we'll bring that up in a little bit. But first, okay. I'm going to show that there. now I have a new weapon. Oh, this is an axe. It is edged. And if you go ahead and press square and look at his stats, it is equally as bad as the other weapon that I was kind of using. So when I play, normally I would like, because the Fandango already starts off being somewhat decent against humans and dragons, because that's the only thing you fought so far. Oh, we didn't. Men- I didn't mention that. As you fight things with the weapon... It will get better at fighting that thing. So you kind of level up that weapon you toward level what, up the, the specific w- type of enemy. <laughs> That's weird, but it kind of makes sense. I mean, I I assume... It doesn't you, make sense for the weapon itself, literally, but... Is this a one-character yes. game? Okay, well, then that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because then it's basically the character's affinity with that weapon and familiar, familiarity with that type of enemy. Um, but that's 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 kind of cool. I I didn't think that games this early on had that kind of uh, ska. I guess like depth of experience system. Yeah. It's um, this one they wanted to have a very organic feel with its growth. The downside being, let's see, one and thirteen, two and nine. So you have your defense strength and then your defense versus mm-hmm. intelligence. Um, I'm not getting spells cast on me very often, so I better choose the gloves. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, there are not a. Uh, they had very organic growth with the game, which is was pretty uncommon. Really, not many games did something like that. Um, the romancing saga games or any of the saga games did it. Mm-hmm. They had an organic growth. Final Fantasy, two also did. Otherwise, yeah, not many games had, uh, like, you know, as you use this thing, you get better at that. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Yeah, especially, like, more than one experience system at that, too. Normally, it's just, like, character EXP. And then, you know, you swap around equipment. That's interesting. So then, do you think that they give you the axe at this point so you can start to learn that? Because the axe is weaker than the sword, right? So 
It, it is, but like not by a lot. Uh, so really, what I think that they wanted you to do is to be like, oh man, I'll totally use this axe because it's change things up. Um, but if you're already looking at the numbers, you're probably going to be like, well, maybe not. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're like, well, I want to see how the axe feels. Precisely, and and yeah, most likely, you, I mean, you might not even know what the hell the numbers really mean, that's true. and that's fine. So what's interesting about these weapons is if you, so if we look at it right now, right, we have, uh, um, uh, I would like to look at your stats now, thank you. If you would uh, be, okay, I'm in the wrong section. Uh, sometimes going through inventory is kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, complex UI. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, cool. So we have human, beast, undead, phantom, dragon, e evil. Mm -hmm. This is important in the order because if this weapon gets better at human, then the two under it, so beast and undead, will start to get worse. Oh. But after that, it's fine. So you can get a weapon mm. that's, for instance, good at undead and phantoms because as a human gets better, beast and undead, I'm sorry, human and phantoms as human gets better beast and undead go down but it won't affect phantom and as phantom gets better dragon evil will go down huh. but it won't affect human so wow okay so it, it really encourages you to keep switching up your weapons which Absolutely. i think is pretty important for this game i'm just getting to the point in a play that i'm at where it's starting to care more about these and ah. as a weapon it, what you'll start to realize is as like i use this axe to hit more bats this weapon will get better at Earth because Earth fights against air creatures. So, so I think an important question then is, do you get to a point in this game where you keep finding weapons that have technically better stats and it feels like you wasted all the progress you put into training with that one weapon? I literally just got to that point. <laughs> yeah. Where I'm just, I got too much shit. Like, there's just too many weapons and I'm like, ah! What do I do with all of it? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I'll just start combining these weapons because you get to workshops okay. and start combining items, which may not always be the best decision, but you can, and it usually will upgrade the type that they are, what kind of weapon. It's pretty cool. That is that is cool. I was going to say that's generally how I've seen more modern games resolve that issue. But... Yes. it's it's. I mean, it's weird, and it doesn't actually make sense because you'd be like, I'll combine this crossbow with this spear and get a knife. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, then. But, you know, whatever. So, well, got her open. It's no good. Not even a budge. <laughs> Watch this. If it weren't locked a moment ago, eh? No key holds the store. It'd be a grimoire. That's doing this. What's doing this? <laughs> well, who locked it then? Someone inside? I'm buggered if I know. <laughs> uh, we'll be cut off from the others. And where are those scouts, man? They're toads dead. I like that they've just cut out all the E's and they're 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 to totally being cockney right now. <laughs> oh, I see. This this be no time for loafing around. I can't do cockney, so I'm not gonna pretend. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're going like Jamaican. <laughs> uh, keep your cap on, brother. <laughs> now come here. Take a look at this. What's that? So, you know, a cool way of showing you that um, there is spooky, creepy going on to this world without mm. having to say it directly to the player. That's kind of nice. So, oh, what's going on with this door? I'll click, oh, it's c covered by the chamomile sigil. So, we got to <laughs> get really that thing. really aromatic tea. Wow. <laughs> what a great lock. <laughs> <laughs> it's the white lotus. <laughs> yeah. This too be a grimoire's doing. What too? By, By the, the gods! gods. <laughs> I'd oft heard of it, but this? Is that a floating platform? It is a floating oh, platform. Oh man, here's where the platforming mechanics come into play. And this is where most games are like, we're just going to put floating platforms in the game, <laughs> and nobody's going to question why. That's just <laughs> Whereas the these works. guys are like, what is this? <laughs> how is this floating? <laughs> That's actually kind of fantastic. Right? They, they give you an explanation, and then actually, like, the characters are in disbelief. <laughs> uh, they're basically saying that there are a lot of miracles and creepy stuff going on. Like a crest, brother. Surely the ma the maesters know of this grimoire. Perhaps we've just been in the dark, eh? <laughs> so this is basically them being like, 
it's probably fine. <laughs> it's well, it's one character actually. We can skip through. This is basically one character uh, saying like, "Oh, you know, I bet you Guildenstern, like the head knight and all of his people, the the church, they probably know that this evil stuff's going. But that's okay. We're gonna use it to our advantage." The other guy's going like, "No, holy righteousness, we can't." And the other guy's like, <laughs> "Rubbish, You're an we're idiot. servants of the Lord." <laughs> yep. <laughs> a true knight of the cross would dabble in the black arts. It's only a rumor. Chilled out. <laughs> but if Sydney is truly a worker of the di Diablerie, Diablery, they can claim they claim he is. I say, fight fire with fire, because that always works. <laughs> and I say, let the Lord be our shield, ever the choir boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, these characters are both gonna die, aren't they? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna uh, die by our hand because I don't know. Let's just know, finish, let's like let's finish the scene. <laughs> That's the kind of the point. It's like, oh, look how nice he's doing. This. <laughs> oh, they're so cool. Uh, and with a grimoire, your the fattest soul could only outfly my swiftest falcon. If ye can believe the chronicles, chroniclers. With a grimoire, you say? Ye could even make a cobblestone float like c clouds. Oh, Jesus! What the fuck? Oh, and bad luck, Ashley Riot. Getting caught again. Oh. What What was that? What was that indeed? Ah, I don't have my right weapon. Ah, fuck. Ooh. I want to use, my, I wanna use my, my human weapon. Your human weapon? Yeah, so... Please tell me you're just going to whip out a human? <laughs> <laughs> that is how I do things. <laughs> I beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Every motherfucker I see is just a weapon for another motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Man, I did like these guys. Ah. What was with the ellipses? Are they trying to like? Is that just them being like? So, I'm yeah. gonna do some. Yeah, yeah. It's them char like basically charging their laser, and when the ellipses hit full, it turns into an exclamation mark, and you know they're about to attack you. Like okay. so. I mean, is there any point to that other than just being aware of what's happening? Like, can you try to stop their action? Uh, technically, you could be like, ah, silence. Okay, so you're like, ah, maybe you're gonna use a spell. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. So obviously I'm literally not even paying attention to what's going on, just hitting these guys over and over in their right arm because it's the first thing that shows up. I don't, this is such an easy fight, it's like, whatever. But, oh, oh crap, I was using my axe the whole time. I didn't switch weapons, whatever. Screw that guy. <laughs> well, it's good that we got to know these two characters very well. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Man, you would have thought that they'd be like, kind of a, like a sub pseudo boss battle, like, Mini boss battle. I mean, they do have a lot of health, but it's really just there to teach you that stuff happened. That's fair. I mean, it, I guess I it's it's, it's teach so early game still that they probably don't want it to be too hard on players. Does it? How hard does it get later on? I assume it gets uh, to the point it where it gets you're just relatively like... difficult. Um, now, see what we haven't unlocked yet are chain abilities, and that's where mm. the the skill of the game comes in, because. Um, I mean, we'll see them when they come up and everything. But basically, it allows you to, when you attack, uh, you can, at, if, at the exact right amount of time, hit a button to chain into another attack, which you can chain into another attack, and chain into another attack. And each, huh. It's not just simple as like attacking over and over again. Every chain does a different thing. So, you'll so be like, it's like pseudo-Legend of Dragoon. Uh, no. You're just ultimately dealing more damage before they attack again. Uh, yes, but it's it's may, way more complicated than that oh, because okay. it's not just about dealing more damage. It's like, oh, this chain, this one chain will deal seventy percent of my mm. regular attack, and that and that's the bread and butter of them. But then you have the other one that it's like this only does ten percent of the original damage, but it fixes your weapon a little bit, mm. or it you know can paralyze them or whatever. So you start getting these chains. That's fair. I found a chest, and inside of it is a container where I can put items and store them for later. Oh, and do I've... you find, like, other chests like that, and you're like, yeah, hey, and look at all it's my like, items like, are They're all there. Look at this portal Teleport stuff. box. Gotta love them. Yeah, well, at least they established that this is a magical world ahead of time. That's true. Well, that's all we have for this episode. Yeah. Blown platform. Blown platforms. That I don't even think I need. I think I can... Oh, wait, no, I do need it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Dunzo. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, question of the day. I guess, well, we could talk about two things. Either the platforming stuff, or establishing characters just to have them die in a pitiful battle. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was funny. <laughs> I, uh, little games of thrownish, I feel. 
Game, Game of Thrones-ish. There have actually been a couple of points so far in this playthrough that have reminded me of Game of Thrones. Good. I'm glad. In a weird way. So, I mean, we could talk about we did explore a little bit more with the equipment, or... Ooh, actually, yeah, I, I think that's a better thing to talk about, because, um... I guess, let's, let's keep this general, but I guess, um... What do you think about the weapon complexity, and, and just, like, the complexity mm. of the stat system? Um, obviously, like, I think it's pretty cool that they have the dual experience system with, like, the weapons sort of leveling them up as you use them. Um, but I want to address that concern that I brought up to you. Do you think that, or rather, how would you design around that, that problem of, like, hey, I spent all this time, you know, building up the experience on this weapon, and suddenly now I find a weapon that's better... And I feel like all this time I spent on this weapon is wasted. Yeah. Um, so we talked about how there's the combining system in this game, but what other alternative solutions would you guys um, design for that to fix that problem? Yeah. Because this is pretty important. You don't want players to feel like they've wasted their time. Yeah. Um, and at the same so, time, you need to show progression in other ways than just honing that one thing. I exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, you end up with Final Fantasy eight weapon. And that's why that's a really important thing system to design, in my opinion. Like one of probably the most essential for this game. Absolutely, without a doubt. Well, yeah. thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, be sure to vote on what you want to see next, and um, share your comments in the the, the section below. It, you know, even if you want to just like chat, it doesn't have to be an answer to the question of the day. But obviously, we could also be about how great my smile is. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.